Hello and welcome to the Ventura Rock Spot. I'm Jeffrey Donovan and I'll be your host. The Ventura Rock Spot is a monthly program featuring musicians from or traveling through Ventura, California. Be sure to check out the website at VenturaRockspot.com where you can find all the past episodes or information on how to become a feature artist yourself. Ventura Rock Spot is the child of VenturaRocks.com. Be sure to check out VenturaRocks.com for all the band news and gig information about your favorite Ventura venues. So in this episode, we have with us Theron Wayhill of Dr. T and the Blues Criminals. Thank you for being with us, Theron. Hi, thank you. It's good to be here. Yeah, so let's just jump right into it. Uh, for those of our viewers who are not familiar with your work, uh, how would you explain the sound of Dr. T and the Blues Criminals? I would explain the sound as a unique spirit that comes out of Ventura. We are a blues, soulful blues band. Um, all the players are local boys. And we have, uh, my dog is down here biting my toe right now. <laughs> and we have uh, gone through lots of different changes in the band, but it's a blues band at its foundation. But it has jazz and it's, very uh, Robin Fordish. How's that? I, I, he's a big influence on me, and he's a, a local boy. Yeah, I know Robin. That's great. So, okay, well, let's see. On that note, let's just jump right in, give our viewers a taste of some of your music. Uh, we're going to start with a video. The song is titled Standing Here All Alone. Let's get to it. Wonderful. That's a great song. Oh. 
why don't you give us a little history of the band? I mean, how'd you guys form? How'd you meet up? Um, well, it's gone through lots of phases. Uh, while I was going through school, uh, I had a very cool uh, professor in Latin American studies, uh, Dr. Jose Cuellar, who was a fabulous, he, well, he still is a fabulous uh, saxophonist. And he had a band called the Rock and Jalapenos. And I had always wanted to play with him. As I finally, as I graduated, get my PhD, I, I missed playing my guitar. So I sweet came back. I quit teaching and came back to playing my guitar. And Dr. Cuellar and I started playing together. So I wanted to come home and I sort of, but I missed, I needed to bring my music with me. When I came home, my bro, uh, Larry, who's been my bro for like 45 years, uh, a sax, great sax player. He and I got together. He said, hey, bro, we got to play some music. And I had just come home and I was like, hey, bro, I already have a band. I just need you. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> so come and play with me. Yeah, all you have to do is solo. That's what I have to do. Just go out and solo. I don't even need you to learn any horn lines or nothing. You just go out and solo, and I'll take care of the rest. And so uh, that was uh, like five, six years ago now. And we've been just busting our butts here in town, playing everywhere and anywhere we can. So as I understand it, you guys actually started as a resistance movement band. Uh, we did. Can you elaborate <laughs> a little bit on that? <clears throat> I was um, brought up a member of the American Indian movement uh, all the way back before it was even formally called AIM. Uh, when we occupied Alcatraz, I was on the occupation of Alcatraz as a young child. And so <laughs> everybody in the Indian community listens to blues. Uh, <laughs> they listen to traditional music, but they listen to blues. It's Indian music. And so uh, we, as I grow up, I stay, keep my involvement in AIM and I'm a person in AIM. Um, but I get asked if I want to play this show for one of our, uh, conferences that we have. And, uh, I say, yeah. So we put together a band, which ended up being me and Dr. Local. And we did it to raise money for the American Indian movement. Okay. Um, Dr. T was this character that I tried that I still keep. It's he's still in development. You know, he's, he's that was actually my that was actually my next question is where did your alter ego, Dr. T, come from? <laughs> Dr. T is the person that gets to go out and, and be cool. Like I'm super, you know, I I'm my an academic and an activist. And so I um, I'm really reserved when I'm not on stage. I, I, I'm I surf and I talk to my bros, but for the most part, the so doctor came as this invention of mine, like uh, Mr. Hyde, you know, he's my most right. yeah. his boundaries are this big and, you know, his <laughs> this big. I, I think I read, a, I think I read a comment from you stating that uh, Dr. T is the gangster that you can't be. <laughs> yeah, he, he is that he's a gangster that I'm not allowed to be because as a young man, um, you know, I come from, the, I come from a musical family. Yeah. Everybody in my family is musical. I have uncles that were really well-known musicians in the 70s. My mom recorded with everybody from Santana to Tower of Power. She was a backup vocalist that worked for Capitol Records. My uncles all recorded for Capitol Records. So I get brought into this instrument primarily because my mom used to go out with Albert King. So he was my first teacher in this instrument. And he gave me a really beautiful 335 uh, oh. all about was beautiful guitar. Um, and uh, I, I grew up in the midst of the blues and I got, was blessed to play with many, with great artists from John Lee Hooker, Buddy Guy and Junior Wells, little Charlie Beatty. I, I was blessed in this life. I, I got blessed to like sit with people that I was always in awe of. Uh, since be before I played with them and then after, uh, and it, uh, Jack Bruce and Ginger Baker, uh, some great, great performances that I was able to be a part of uh, with this sort of organic space that I grew up in. 
No. Yeah. I, I, know, I know you started playing at about three years old. So were you, were you playing that 335 when you were three? I, that was, yeah. That, That's it a was pretty huge. big guitar for a three-year-old. <laughs> it was huge. And uh, I grew into it. <laughs> uh, it, I still have it. It's it's. I still have that guitar. It's that's it's, great. That's I, great. Um, so you know, it was a it 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 was a beautiful musical life. Then, when I was uh, in my early twenties, I was in a band with a guy named Brett Valerie. His older brother was Ross from Journey, and I studied with those cats and hung out with them and partied with them and had a great 10 year space with them. Somewhere along the line, Ross was like, hey bro, you know, like not everybody gets to make music uh, their livelihood. You should probably, you're, you're too smart to be a musician. You need to go to school. So it was really Ross Valerie uh, that, that kind of encouraged me to go in, to school and be a teacher. I guess what, I don't remember, who, one of the early guitar players for Journey before Steve Perry uh, was was when quit and went and studied and mm -hmm. became a physician. And I don't know, he told me this, this was a long, this is like 35 years, 40 years ago now. So, um, so anyway, I quit music and I went this, I was in the middle of studying music at, at, at the university and I just kind of quit and I started studying history and I became a historian. Mm -hmm. uh, but I couldn't wait to quit teaching because I just missed my guitar every day. And I get to play it if I was lucky a couple of hours. But, you know, when, when before all of that, I used to play this thing like 12, 14 hours a day. Yeah, yeah. And, and well, now I'm back to that. So now I'm a little bit happy. <laughs> but well, it, yeah, um, it, was a, it was a remarkable young life. So uh, the blues criminals, you're very much rooted in Ventura and the Ventura lifestyle. Uh, and, and for you, what makes Ventura so special? And what do you like about, what do you like most about playing in Ventura? Oh, wow, that's a deep question. Okay, so for me, my bond to Ventura obviously is because my people, my ab aboriginally speaking, my people are from here. But uh, my family's from here because we stayed here. The Lopez, the Martinez's, the Flores, that we're huge. It's it's a huge family. The Picos, we're we're enormous here. Um, and so part of my love is that. Part of my love is the beauty that's come in the terms of the music and the street life that. Is still, although it's struggling to survive, it's still surviving. Mm -hmm. uh, and in that, you know, blues in and of itself, as I was saying, is a, is a resistance music. It's a it's a music that went against the mainstream of contemporary uh, serious compositions, you know, uh, European compositions. And so, this space in the blues is a very much this reclamation of of Aboriginal identity and indigeneity. That I believe everybody in Ventura has. I don't necessarily think it's just those of us who are Shumash or have this space. You could take a break and hear up and down the street at one moment, clubs with great musicians in them yeah. everywhere. The yeah. brotherhood of musicians here is fabulous. The yeah. sisterhood of musicians here is fabulous. What we have is dynamic. And that's it's, it's I, very, it's very special. Absolutely. Great. Um, so, all right, well, let, let's see. On that note, um, why don't we get to the next video? And this is a song called Even Brothers Get the Blues.
that was called Even Brothers Get the Blues. <laughs> that was yes. great. Another uh, one with the Libby Bowl. And uh, tell us a little bit about that song. Well, so that song was a song that um, I wrote for my brother, who was uh, who always was like, uh, and everybody's, Bobby, you're always so happy and so up. And I was like, don't worry, brother. Even I get the blues. Um, and so I I wrote this sort of Latin bass kind of blues uh, instrumental. It now has lyrics because our bass player is like, bro, you have to put lyrics to that. So I wrote lyrics to it, but in that's the way I wrote it was the way we performed it at the Libby Bowl. And so that was a song that went out to my older brother, Walter, who is uh, my protector and guardian in life. <laughs> um, what's your process for creating music? Uh, do you start with the lyrics? Do you start with the music? Or is it just sometimes one comes before the other and sometimes it's the other way around? Sometimes one does come before the other. Um, you know, I tend to, in large part, I tend to like throw down a riff. If I'm hearing a riff in my brain, I'll stop and push my memo and I'll play it out and, uh, and work it and, and work with it and look what's going on in it and see if I can create a format for a song within it. And if I can, then I will write lyrics to it, usually. Right. So I, I, I'm a big fan of Garage Band. I love that thing. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll jump drum tracks and get out the bass, and, get, and I have I have a blast I, because I can do it anywhere. <laughs> you mentioned Stevie Ray Vaughan, and we do have one more video for our viewers that we're going to play here very shortly. Uh, this one's called Stevie's Final Brews, and yeah, this is this is your tribute to Stevie Ray Vaughan. Uh, would you like to comment on this song a little bit more? I mean, obviously, SRV had a big influence on you. Yeah, good Lord. Uh, I have um, I have this relationship that is super emotional with that elder. You know, he was, he and I studied with the same, with the same person. And so I have always felt a deep connection to where he was at in his mind and his heart, where he was at with his sobriety, where he was at with all these beautiful things that he was experiencing as a human being, playing this music to thousands of people who thought he was very godlike, including me. Uh, and so for me, I, I had always wanted to give him something back to what he gave to me. So this song, um, there's a second part that isn't on this particular video because it's actually this really long, long uh, instrumental that Brian Robinson, uh, our bass player, contributed to it after we, afterwards because he, feels, he felt the same drive towards this music. And uh, so Stevie's final groove is, is my release of that emotion that I have for Stevie Ray and not only what he gave to me, but what he gave to the world. Uh, he was truly a blues man. And although I love Jimmy Vaughn, he was no Stevie Ray and Jimmy's a masterful player, but there was something that we all connected with him, with Stevie that allowed us to see some humanity and uh, his departure was really heavy duty, like mm -hmm. brought me to, it still is heavy weighs on me because I really feel like uh, that was the second coming of Jimi Hendrix. Right, yeah. <laughs> well, listen, on that note, let's play this next video for the viewers. Uh, this is Stevie's Final Brews. Here we go. A song off our CD called Stevie's Final Brews, my tribute to my Brother Stephen Ray Vaughn.
So that, that was really great. And I, I'm sure that Stevie has given you a big smile from up there uh, hearing that. So. <laughs> it was really good. Um, listen, for our viewers who would like to learn more about Dr. T and the Blues Criminals, uh, where can they find you online? We are on uh, Twitter. We're on Facebook. We're our, we are all over the all over social media. We uh on Facebook, you can find us. It's probably the most safest way and the easiest way is to find us on, on Facebook. Um, you, you can look up uh, the Dr. T page. It'll have, uh, there's a few of them out there. I think this one has, um, are the pictures of the Libby Bowl on there. Mm -hmm. And so that's the best, most productive way to get a hold of us. We play all over the place. If, uh, and I try to let everybody know where we're at when, through through facebook twitter and uh, instagram and so that's the safest ways to get a hold of us is through that all right great well uh, we're just about out of time so do you have any final comments or insights for our viewers my final comment was uh i had a great harmonica player friend told me this one time uh blues is truth <laughs> final comment blues is truth it's that's divine truth it's how I this is playing this instrument. It's how I give my love and prayers back to my community, both Indian community and my extended community in Ventura. Uh, I love this place, and I so so enjoy bringing my band and our hard work to the public. It's a lot of fun, and we appreciate everybody that supports us. That's great. Thank you. All right. Well, that concludes this episode of Ventura Rock Spot. Uh, thank you so much, Theron, for being with us. It was really a pleasure, and I look forward to seeing you playing around the Ventura area. Thank so, you, Deb. Uh, I'd also like to thank our producer, GWC Productions, and our partners, our Ventura TV and VenturaRocks.com. And most of all, thank all of you for tuning in. That concludes this episode. Good night.